Hey guys, welcome again to Joe Knows. We have been talking about parenting for a lifetime, and I've talked to you about the importance of having influence. Influence is you want to be a parent for a lifetime. Certainly not going to be a father who starts out that way, but it moves into where you have influence. And if you want to do that for a lifetime, there's lots of important things we've already talked about that you'll do. And now I want to continue uh, our last talk about teenagers, and we've talked quite a bit about teenagers, but. Um, I want to talk about two things. Uh, first today is preparing your children for their life home, uh, which, which talks about how they're going to um, not just earn a living, how they're going to spend their time, what they're going to produce with their life. And I want to just tell you a little story about my childhood. Most of you probably don't. If you don't know me from when I'm really young, you wouldn't know this, but, but sports was a major, major part of my life growing up. I played baseball. In high school, I played baseball and football constantly every day of my life. So when I got into high school, I was able to play organized, and uh, I was on a baseball team, and, and I played football. And football was my life. I didn't know the Lord at that time. It was my life, and uh, I just loved it. It was my passion. And I remember as I got out of high school, I had some opportunities to play at the next level, which would be college. D3, maybe D2, I wasn't going to go to D1 school. But it was a real love of my life, and my dad had other plans for me. Okay, my dad had bought a landscaping business, and my brother was going to run it. My dad wanted me to go with him, and be a part of that. So I was bribed by my dad, offered a brand new car, the car of my choice, if I would not go and play football in college. And again, you can see my focus was not about going to college. It was about playing football in college, but my dad bribed me, and I I took the car. And I can remember in the landscaping business in the fall, I can remember driving my football field that I used to play at, and I can remember crying, getting teary-eyed because I wasn't doing, I wasn't fulfilling my passion, I wasn't following my dream. And I can tell you this, I'm going to make this short, but I'll tell you this, even to this day, I have dreams that I get one more chance to play football. And I'm always on the sideline. And there's a coach, and I'm on a team, and the coach calls my number. And when I go out to, and I'm getting ready to go out, I either can't find my helmet, or I'm standing there in a full uniform with no shoes barefoot, or I just can't get my body to move to get on the field. And I really think that because I never pursued my dream. Would I have been a professional football player? No, probably not. But should I have tried? Yes. I should have went as far as I could because those dreams are, are because I never got out of my system. I laid up and it was always what if I could have, and I think I was 25 years old and I still thought that there was a chance if Bill Parcells, who was the coach of the New York Giants at that time, if he'd have seen me, run, that he had given me a chance to at least return punts for the New York Giants. I never got it out of my system. Now, when it comes to you helping your child find their life calling, uh, let them dream. And don't stuff their dreams out. Don't try them. I know you have a plan for their lives. Let it come. You need to allow your child to pursue their dreams. Now, listen, if, 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 if your the child is trying to do something, or how many people make it to the NFL? Not that many, but I still needed to try. And I could have played at the next level. I could have played in college, and I would have been a good college football player. But that's all I get to say. I could have, because I never gave it a shot. And I would say you want to help to find out what is your child's passion. You see, when you work in your passion, now thankfully, landscaping actually, believe it or not, next to football became my passion. I love it. Uh, and now ministry is my passion. I absolutely love it. But when you are working in the area of your passion, you're not really working. You're living a, a fulfilled and passionate life. So what you've got to do is you've got to help your child um, pursue their passion. And when we're young, we, we want to do things. We want to be, you know, famous musicians. And, you know, we want to be actors and actresses. And we say, well, that's never going to happen. Don't, don't say that. Your child. Help them to follow their dream as much as possible. 
help them because you know what? My son, my youngest son, pursued music and I had to adjust to that. And I did it, I'm really glad I did because even though my son is not a rock star, he is producing and developing rock stars and all of the things that he pursued, they're happening and taking place. And I'm really glad I didn't tell him to lay up and talk him out of the things that he was excited about. And my other children, they're in areas that they love, but your job is not to get them in, it's to help them to know, don't lay up. Pursue the things that are in your heart. And maybe you won't be a famous actor or actress, but maybe you'll be producing some of the movies that those famous actors and actresses are in. And maybe you'll just find out that some things you couldn't do it, but you tried. And you won't have regrets and you won't have those dreams. You know what those football dreams are for me? They're nightmares. Because I never get on the field and get the ball in my hand and start running down the field. And I know I, I probably wouldn't have played professionally, but I had a few more years of football in me. So your job is to find out what they love, what they're passionate about, and also how they're gifted and help them to maybe even find or even craft out a job, a calling that fits into that. Okay, so you need to help them do that. That is not, that is an, a skill and it's an art and you just have to walk through it and it's scary. But listen, uh, don't snuff out their dreams, okay? Second thing and the last thing I want to say about teenagers is you need to help them find their life mate. Okay, so here's what I would suggest. Starting now, you say, Joe, I don't even have children. That's fine. Starting now, begin to pray for the spouse of your future child, okay? or future children. If your child is now in kindergarten, or they're, they're young, or they're especially teenagers, you begin praying for the person, now if they're 15 or 16, chances are the person that they're going to marry is already alive. You don't know who they are, but you can be praying for that person. I would highly recommend it. Let your child know that you're praying for their future spouse. Okay? So um, how do you get a person ready uh, to, to make a good choice? Because, by the way, someone I know once said this, and I think it's incredible. Next to knowing Jesus Christ, the next most important thing you having a happy life is choosing wisely when you choose your spouse. And we do get to choose in this day and age. Years ago, I mean, a lot of these things, they, they were choices that were made for you. I know my, my grandmother got married when she was 13 years old. Her husband was a, 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 a marriage that was set up for them, and she, and, and she made the best of it. I think she even loved her husband. I never met him. He passed away before I was old enough to know him. We do get to choose. And that could be a problem. So choosing is, you know, uh, you have to choose wisely. So, so here's what you do uh, with your the girls, the daughters. Okay, you make it so that the way they see you, and I'm speaking as a man, as a father, the way they see me treat their mom, and the way I treat my daughter, it makes it, it causes her to want to choose someone like that. Okay. So if I don't have time for my daughter, she's going to choose anyone because the girls need a man in their lives. And I want that man to be, I want him to be me and my daughter to be out of me. I want her to be me until she's old enough to choose wisely. And um, I did the best I could to let her know that she was the greatest girl in the world. I treated her well and uh, I wanted to treat her mom well also. And what it did is it, 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 it caused her to have expensive faith, I'll say, when it comes to a man. She didn't want to settle. And she actually has told me, Dad, you made it real hard for the guys I date, but you set the bar high. And, and, and again, the Joe knows what I talk about here are things that I've learned and experienced. I didn't really know I was doing that. She told me, Dad, are you treating me the way you treated me? And treating mom the way you treated her? You caused me to raise my bar high. And my daughter, I think she's with the guy she's going to marry now, but all the other guys, they just couldn't cut it. And I'm really glad. And so what you want to do is really do your best to treat the girls and women in your life. By the way, your models, the way a man treats his mom, his wife, and his daughter, will cause them to not want to settle for some guy that's not worth their time. 
Okay, so when it comes to boys, uh, I think it's important that we teach them what it means to be a man. That you provide, that you protect, and let them see that happening around them. And, and then you've got to have that time with the guys where you just, you help, you, you, you start, you, you let them help you find out what they need in you know, a woman. Okay, so for, for my son Chris, my son Chris wanted a partner in life. Okay, now that really wasn't what I wanted. Actually, well, I, let, me, let me cut. It. He wanted a partner in every aspect of his life. I didn't want a partner in ministry. Some pastors, they co pastor churches with their wives. I really didn't want that. I wanted a life partner, not a ministry partner. So that's what I got. But my son, he really likes to and him and his wife do everything together, and that's what he wanted. And it was pretty obvious after a while from getting to know him. That's what he needed, and I'm not picking the girl out for him, okay? But when they come along, I'm observing, and when he asks, I can let him know if I think this is a woman that is going to be what he needs to, 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 to complete his life. Um, Jojo, different. Jojo's out there in the world working with all of these artists, and Jojo wants someone that he can come home to. And he wants to, he wants to have just a, a person that is going to share the intimacies of his life, and he doesn't want to learn the middle of all that stuff. And, and I'm, I'm not even sure exactly, but I think JoJo, he's with a girl right now, they're dating long distance relationship, but she seems to bring out the best in him, and that's what I'm there for. I'm not there to, to see if she's got a good enough job or if she's a pretty enough girl to marry into my family. Or if I want her, you know, her genes to be a part of the Centineo. That's not, it's, is she going to be compatible with my son Jojo? And I know Jojo well, and what I do is I don't tell him, I don't answer that. I just look at the things. And if I see positives, I, 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 I talk about those. If I see negatives, I wait for him to bring them up. Jojo's maybe some other people. And it became obvious to me they were not the right person for him. And I didn't just say, Jojo, that's it in the relationship. I just waited. And as those things became obvious to him, I was able to confirm it. But I will say this. Um, I talked to you about this early on. Parenting is, it's a lifetime job. And when you do it right, you have the joy of being there with them at every stage in their life. So you want to help them find uh, their calling in life so that they can go they can work at a job that's really not work. It's really just them fulfilling their life. Help them do that. Walk through that. You don't have to do more. Don't do more than you need to. Okay. Just do what you can and, and be there for them. And then the life scene is dads really do well with your daughters and, and, and with your sons. Just be there with them, observing, watching. You say, Joe, I haven't done this stuff. So uh, starting now, I'm going to do it great. I got a better way for you to start now. Here's what you do. If you haven't been doing this, if you haven't been treating your wife and daughter the way that you would want the person that marries them to treat them, instead of just saying, well, starting now, we're going to try, how about this? Get a reason. Go to your wife and daughter together and apologize to them for not having been there the way that you want to. And they'll give you actually a reason. You'll get to slug over. You don't have to try and even things out. Ask them to forgive you. In doing that with your boys, just walk through life with them. Just be, let them know that I'm going to be with you at every step of the way. And I'm always here to answer any and every question that you have to be as best I can. Be there with them. Take that journey. Next week, we will finish this uh, this series, Parenting for a Lifetime. We're going to talk about parenting adult children. God bless you. I hope this is helpful. See you next time.